So from time to time on Raising Kanan, they seem to be dropping a lot more hints and a lot more detail about the past. Over the course of the first season, we've learned about Def Con, High Post and Marvin's past and how he was in prison for a short period of time. And that's just a few secrets that we've learned and I said we're going to continue to learn more because a backstory in essence will always have a backstory and episode 8 proved just that. We learned more about Def Con, Detective Howard and Raka's relationship and Marvin being a junkie and we also had Kanan who learned the real truth about how he's been responsible for the death of many, including D Wiz's death. But we're going to be talking about secrets and the past that was revealed and did Raquel want Lulu to batter up to kill Marvin? And is this why they stole Unique's jacket? So they could frame him. So we're talking all things Marvin and Rack and the secrets that we learned in episode 8. As well as referring to the 48 laws of power and why you should always crush your enemy with no mercy. But of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related. But let's start with Marvin telling us that Lou would be more than happy to pull the trigger on him. Marvin said to Kanan that he doesn't think Rack would kill her own son because of the consequences of the blue caps that dropped so many bodies in the streets but she would kill him and his uncle Lou would be more than happy to pull the trigger and Marvin was so sure that Lou was someone who would kill him if Rack gave the order and this is the game that they're in and Marvin understands this we've seen family kill each other before and it's something I do think we'll see again with the Thomases at some point but something tells me that there's more to this backstory and we still haven't learned everything about the past with the Thomas family especially because Jukebox said to Kanan that there are secrets that he doesn't know and doesn't want to know so I definitely think that there are more secrets secrets that we still need to learn but let's talk about what we do know and what we learned in episode 8 as well and to do this we're going to rewind it back a few episodes back to episode 5 where we learned that Marvin did a short bid in prison after his heated conversation with Lou he said that if you ever thought you kept bad secrets back in the day you wouldn't have done your whole bid in Elmira but Marvin said he got set up and we've already spoken about how Raquel could have been the one to set him up because she is cold as ice and does what needs to be done for the benefit of the business and for the benefit of the family and this is something I'm going to come back to in just a moment but bringing it back to episode 8, Rack told Kanan that do you really want to know why Marvin ain't running his own shit and why he did that bid when you and Duke were babies and it's because Marvin was using. Marvin had turned into a junkie and started selling dope out of his own crib which in this shit is a cardinal sin and when the police busted Marvin's door, Marvin was so high he offered to sell them a quarter and Rack said that's the person who Kanan was doing business with. So we learned the truth about how and why Marvin was in prison but I still do think Rack had something to do with this because, as she said, he turned into a junkie and selling dope out your own crib is a cardinal sin and I'm sure that's the sort of heat and attention that she didn't want for the Thomas organisation. She's shown us that she's capable of removing anyone to protect Kanan when she had D Wiz killed and I'm sure she may have thought the same about Duke. Just look at how Davina has to look after Tanisha because her mum's a junkie and someone who died just over a month ago and I'm sure Rack didn't want Duke to be around Marvin who was using so she took Duke in and that's why they were so close and shared so many secrets with each other so despite Marvin being arrested for selling dope out of his own crib I definitely think Rack still had something to do with this. So Rack has tried everything when it comes to Marvin, tried to bash some sense into him, demoting him in the family business to just refurb in the apartment, she kept him out of the game and she may have even been the one to send him to prison as well just like we discussed. So she's tried everything when it comes to Marvin and she even told him that she can't trust him and she can't count on him for anything so she told him that she wanted nothing to do with him anymore and he was out and he's the key. She told him to take whatever work he has left and take it to Lulu's. She sent him to Lulu's which is why we saw him driving down to Lou's house and as I said Rack had enough for Marvin and because Kanan had bodies connected to him now because of Marvin according to Rack I think she wanted him gone and not just him but maybe Unique too because maybe that's why Lulu took Unique's jacket to frame Unique. You kill two problems in one, kill two birds with one stone. You get rid of the problem of Marvin and frame the death on Unique too. So that's just a different perspective of Unique's jacket and why we saw Lulu stealing this. Now just before we come to Lulu ignoring Rack and the whole situation that we saw play out, Marvin said to Rack, look I can do better and he wants to do better and this is the part of the reason we may see Marvin approaching a therapist next season because he really wants to change and be someone who doesn't let his family down anymore because he's someone who says you never give up on family. So in season 2 I think we'll see a different Marvin with the help of his new therapist Renee. But coming back to Rack sending Marvin to Lou's house, this is why she could have rang Lulu and told him you on deck, bad her up and they've been talking in cold all season long. It's what they do, it's what the older Kanan told us in his narration but this is the person she calls when she wants shit doing. But Lou didn't answer the phone, he was taking the night off, he was probably enjoying some downtime having a drink after he just secured 50% of his new record label with Crown. But while Marvin was on his way to Lou's, Warrell was already there, he was ready to take it to Lou and deliver the promise that Unique made in episode 7. But the question is, did Rack ring Lou, tell him he's on deck and to batter up because Marvin was on his way and the job was to kill him 
and potentially frame Unique because we never really got the answers as to why Lou stole Unique's jacket and we may never do but I definitely think it's a possibility and who knows what would have played out if Warrell and Unique's boys never turned up because Lulu definitely wouldn't have been afraid to pull the trigger on Marvin and Marvin even said that himself. But here's why she needs Marvin, he turned up at the right time, albeit because she sent him to lose, but he's not afraid to put himself in danger, in harm's way, to protect the ones that he loves, because he's someone who will never turn his back on his family, Raquel may well do, but not Marvin. And Marvin backed up what he said in episode 1, to never turn your back on family. He went into a house that was full of flames and smoke to save his brother Lou. And a crucial mistake that Warrell and Unique's crew made was, they didn't finish the job on Marvin and Lulu. We've referred to a lot of the 48 Laws of Power throughout this season, and I want to talk about Law 15, Crush Your Enemy. Crushing your enemies when you give them no room to move, no room to manoeuvre, no room to negotiate, you back them into a corner and you finish them, completely, showing no mercy. And that's what Unique's crew failed to do and that's going to be their biggest regret because even if you leave the smallest of embers alight, even if it's just the smallest of embers, you could see a fire break out. And this is the same case with Scrappy as well, they should have crushed him totally because if you haven't crushed them totally, then they will come back and seek revenge, just like we saw Kanan doing in power when Ghost didn't completely crush him. And this is why Marvin's going to come all guns blazing in episode 9. And whether or not Raquel really did intend on killing Marvin, she's now going to have to turn to him because he's the only person she has left. Lulu is going to be recovering in hospital and Scrappy is down and out for a while as well. So she's going to need the help of the whole Thomas family and not just Marvin, but Kane and Jukebox as well. Everybody's going to have to step up and play their part and Rack will have a position for all of them. So we're really going to see Rack and Marvin really working together now for the first time this season. She's going to be planning with Marvin and giving him the role that he's always wanted within the Thomas organization from the beginning. And that's the gangster shit because that's what he does best. And this is Marvin's time to show us what he can really do. And I don't think he's going to disappoint, but it's going to be very difficult to attack Unique and his crew. He's a leader who's very well protected in a lot of aspects. He has power in numbers and his cars are always armored up and bulletproof. So it's going to be difficult to hit Unique, but I'm sure Marvin and Raquel will find a way to retaliate and get revenge for what they did to Scrappy and especially for what they did to Lou. So whether Raquel had intentions of having Marvin killed or not and using this to frame Unique, they're going to be working together and Rack is going to have to put a trust in Marvin. But let me know what you guys think down below, whether Raquel did intend to have Lulu kill Marvin and could she have planned to kill two birds with one stone by having Unique set up for the murder as well, using his jacket. Even if she did, it's all changed now because it's a time where she needs to count on him and trust him and a complete contrast from their conversation at the apartment. And as the 48 Laws of Power has taught us, Morel and Unique's crew will regret not completely finishing the job and crushing their enemies because Marvin is about to come with full force. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. And of course, if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.